The rosters for the 70th NBA All-Star Game have been announced, and LeBron James wasn't happy with one particular player who wasn't picked, and it wasn't even his teammate. We will go through the All-Star selections, the All-Star snubs, and key action from the floor after that announcement was made. Hey, I'm Tass Mellis, and this is what you need to know in the NBA for Wednesday, February 24th. Let's start with the Western Conference Reserves picks because the West caused more controversy than the Eastern Conference, probably because there are more winning teams in the West and just overall more star power. So more names to argue about. Let's start at the top. The Utah Jazz, best team in the Western Conference, best team in the NBA, received two of the seven reserves picks. Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell, both making their second all-star appearance. Once you're in the club, you're in the club. Those two solidifying their membership. Anthony Davis was selected, joining his teammate LeBron James, who is a starter. Paul George did the same, joining his Clippers teammate Kawhi Leonard, who's a starter. So that's four of the seven reserves picks. Damian Lillard, he made it for the Portland Trail Blazers. Duh, he could have been a starter. Considering the season that the Blazers are having with C.J. McCollum injured, Dame had to be in there. So that's number five of the seven reserves picks. Then there's Chris Paul. He was selected from the Phoenix Suns, who are impressing, sitting at fourth in the West. Now, many people are split as to who should represent the Suns, whether it's Chris Paul or Devin Booker. With only 12 roster spots in each conference, it was going to be tough for both CP and Book to make it. CP, for one, took to Instagram to vouch for his, his teammate, who is having an amazing year and scoring 27 points per game over his last 10. That's when LeBron took to Twitter. Devin Booker is the most disrespected player in our league. Simple as that. Then he also tweeted, followed by Dame Dalla. But Damian Lillard was selected for the team, LeBron. Either way, LeBron angry about that. However, there will be an injury replacement for LeBron's teammate, Anthony Davis. He's not partaking in the game. LeBron is essentially telling the commish, Adam Silver, hey, you've got to get Devin Booker on the Western Conference squad. So that's six picks. The final reserve, although they're not picked in any order, this is my order, Zion Williamson from the New Orleans Pelicans, making his first All-Star appearance in just his second NBA season. He's the only player from a losing team to be added in the Western Conference. And there was talk last year that the bubble format was expanded to include the New Orleans Pelicans because TV advertisers and just fans in general wanted to see Zion Williamson in the bubble. And that's why I assume the Lakers' Jared Dudley tweeted, How the hell is Devin Book not an All-Star? Come on, brah. Stop with the politics. We all see it. Although the All-Star reserves are picked by coaches. I'm not sure they're playing politics whatsoever. They just see a guy on the other side of the floor that they have to game plan for that is one of a kind in the NBA. So that's that. Many people vouching for Devin Booker. Zion Williamson becomes the first All-Star born in the 2000s. Other guys who are snubbed, Mike Conley with the Utah Jazz is not making his first All-Star game unless he is that injury replacement. DeMar DeRozan having an incredible year with the San Antonio Spurs. Their record is better than the Blazers. They won't have a representative. John Morant with the Memphis Grizzlies and CJ McCollum with the Portland Trail Blazers who is injured and would have made this even far more complicated than it already is. McCollum for one took to Twitter and said, hey, Devin Book really didn't make it. That's crazy, bruh. Really cold, too. Shake my head. Sick world. As did his team at Yusuf Nurkic. D. Book not on the list? The Blazers just got railed by the Phoenix Suns a couple nights ago. There's some recency bias in this. The Blazers have actually lost three in a row after losing to the Nuggets and Nikola Jokic is 41 and they need that all-star break right now dropping three games after a six game win streak as Lillard said after this one it's just hard playing consistently great at that level and he has been doing that the last five weeks without CJ McCollum who is having a career year it's incredible what the Blazers have been able to do and McCollum's not coming back the next couple games my fantasy team cannot wait until his arrival just hang on Blazers only four more games till the party in Atlanta that's not a party but all-Star Weekend is a party, but no partying allowed. Anyways, let's get to the Eastern Conference of that All-Star Game weekend. James Harden's got to be at the All-Star Game. His ninth 
all-star selection. He joins his teammates who are starting, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. No partying in Atlanta, James Harden. Two Boston Celtics were picked amongst the reserves. Jalen Brown making his first all-star appearance, very deserved. And Jason Tatum making his second all-star appearance, although the Boston Celtics are now sub-500 after a tough loss to the Dallas Mavericks. We'll get to that. Okay, so that's three of the seven. Zach Levine and Julius Randle, going to lump them together here because they're both making their first all-star appearance. Congrats to both of them. Levine for the Bulls, Randle for the Knicks. Zach Levine says he's unlikely to participate in the slam dunk contest, although there's still a chance. And we've got two more spots remaining. Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. A bit of a surprise because Tobias Harris has become the more reliable offensive player beside Joel Embiid, but Ben Simmons, he does it all. Offensively and defensively, of course. Well, he doesn't do it all, but he does most of it. His third all-star appearance. Once you're in the club, you're in the club. Congrats, Ben. And the last spot, it rankled a few people's feathers. Nikola Vucevic of the Orlando Magic has had an incredible offensive season. His second All-Star appearance. So who was snubbed? Trey Young of the Atlanta Hawks, a very big name at the top of the snubbed list, especially after making it last year on a very bad team with Atlanta. His team is better, but he's a bit of a victim of raised expectations and starting the season well because his team started 4-1. and They're 9-17 and since. They just can't close out teams in the fourth quarter. Like on Tuesday against the Cavs, who had lost 10 in a row. The Hawks were up four with two minutes left. Then Trey took all the shots the rest of the way, missing them all. He went 0 of 4. And of course, the Hawks aren't even in that position if Trey Young isn't on that squad. But his team has played an uninspired basketball a ton. They lost on an uncontested dunk with four seconds left by rookie Lamar Stevens. He just can't do that. And then Trey did pass after the final buzzer to Tony Snell, who was in the corner for the game-winning attempt. But it was too late. Not great game management right there. Trey's going to learn from all this and become a far better player. No DeMontis Sabonis of the Indiana Pacers. He made it last year for the first time. He is a deserving all-star. He's having a great season. No Fred Van Vliet of the Raptors. I understand that one. Raps had a poor start, and they do it by committee. Pascal Siakam, Kyle Lowry, and all those guys. No Bam Adebayo of the Heat. Any coach would want him as their starting center. But he's also a victim of not winning and not the sexiest of numbers. And no Gordon Hayward of the Charlotte Hornets. Although they get an angry Devin Booker as their prize on Wednesday night. Let's talk a bit about the Mavericks Celtics ending because this was late game basketball at its finest. Luka Doncic hit a huge three, 16 seconds left. Although Jalen Brown came back the other way, nine seconds left, hit a tough shot in the lane to tie it. I love the Mavs not calling a timeout. So Luka Doncic bringing the ball up, tie game. Jalen Brown being the great defender that he is, guarding Luka Doncic. He gets picked off. Aaron Neesmith, the Celtics rookie, picks up Luka Doncic and just for a second comes out of his defensive stance, stands up a little bit, tries to go out to the sideline, and that was enough time for Luka Doncic to get off a step back three, even though he had another Celtic running at him and Neesmith recovering. Game over. Luka, a huge three to win the game. When Jalen Brown was asked to talk about going to his first All-Star game after that loss, he said, I don't feel like an All-Star after that. Yeah, the Celtics sub 500. It's a bit surprising at this point of the season. One other game of note. New Wolves head coach Chris Finch making his debut against the Milwaukee Bucks since taking over for Ryan Saunders here this week. Carl Anthony Towns was selected an All-Star twice in his first five seasons, but season number six has been extremely rough for him both on and off the floor. Now, the Wolves started relatively well for them in this game. They scored the most first quarter points that they have all season, 36, but the Bucs were just too much. Good sign for the Wolves, though. I love this quote. Carl Anthony Towns said said this about himself. One of my biggest weaknesses is loyalty. He's not going anywhere, Minnesota. One minor transaction of note, DeMarcus Cousins is available. He was released by the Houston Rockets after they guaranteed his salary as a token of gratitude for the rest of the season. The Lakers and the Nets are the most mentioned destination for the Brooklyn Nets, or for DeMarcus Cousins, although the Phoenix Suns have been mentioned by our Trey Kirby. That's an interesting one. All right, 
You can check out Trey Kirby, Jay Skeets, and Lee Ellis on the full No Dunks episode here on Wednesday. I'll be back on Thursday to give you the news as fast as I possibly can. I'll see you then.